This is lecture 10A. It also belongs probably in the lecture 10B series. Uh, the subject is the Bezier curves. Bezier curves were um, first, well, the name comes from Pierre Bezier, who used them in the automotive industry for this computer aided machining. In the past, uh, drafters or and designers would, would make a drawing and then workmen would by hand make different parts of the car bodies or this applies to all manufacturing but we now have computer driven machining machinery so the input to them are functions and then the machine creates the parts so the idea was to find functions that could be used to uh, to model very complicated shapes these are then fed to the computer which are then make the parts for the cars. They were actually developed for a Citroen by a different, um, a different mathematician, but the name Bezier stuck, just like Pythagorean theorem is called Pythagorean theorem, even though it was well known before Pythagoras. You will find these curves other places as well in computer graphics. Uh, Photoshop uh, uses them. GIMP uses uh, Bezier curves. They're also used by printers for fonts, for drawing fonts. So there are quite a few applications here. It's also a, a good example of parametric equations, and that's why I gave you some homework problems on them, and that's why I'm demonstrating them here. These are parametric equations. But first, I'm going to define what the Bezier curve is. Um, it's a curve that's defined by four, a set of four points, P0, P1, P2, and P3. The endpoints of the curve are P0 to P3. In other words, that's where the curve runs from, from point 0 to point 3. There are two other points in the plane, and these are handles that are not necessarily on the curve itself, and they are called P1 and P2. So now I'm going to switch to a Java applet and show you a demonstration of these Bezier curves. Here's a, a demonstration using Java for Bezier curves. It was developed by Mark Hofer at UCLA. So I'm going to start by defining four points in the plane. Let's call this one P0. Here's my P1. Here's P2. And here's P3. So you can see the curve is running from P0 to P3. Right. P1, I'm going to pull on a little bit, is one of the handles. P2 is another handle. Now the idea is that the slope from P0 to P1, the straight line slope from the point to the handle, and the slope of the curve, the derivative of the curve at P0, are the same. Right. If I change the slope, the curve changes. These things are pretty cool. They almost look like they're alive. Okay. Same thing here. The slope from P3 to, P, to the handle P2 and the derivative of the curve at the point P3 is the same. If I move it, the curve has to change because it has to follow that slope. The longer the line, the longer the curve stays close to the straight line to the handle. See, it bends away pretty fast when I have it slow. When I have a, a, a small line here between P3 and P2, and the curve stays closer when I have a long line, closer for a longer periods of time or longer distances. So that's the idea. I'll go over it again. Here's P0. And here's P3. The curve runs from P0 to P3. The other two points are handles. P1 is a handle. P2 is a handle. They do not necessarily lie on the curve, but they can. If you can get these things to lie down into a straight line, now I have them on the curve. So they can lie on the curve, but only in that case. Otherwise, they're over here, and they can cross and do all kinds of things. So um, those, that's the little segment of a Bezier curve. If you have a a uh, bigger segment, for example, in Photoshop or GIMP, each little segment that you put together will be a Bezier curve. The actual study of a lot of the properties of the Bezier curve is for a, a higher mathematics course. This graph right here, what's, what's shown here, is called a convex hull, and this curve lies within this hull. Here's your point A. The curve is running from A to D. In this case, that's your P0 is up here. And the P1 is down here, or the P3 is here. And then the handles are elsewhere. Okay? At B and C. 
and this uh, what's shown here is just a notation that I'm using. Here are some non-moving examples of Bezier curves. Uh, this is P0. That's P3, and the two handles are lying between, right on the line. Again, here would be P0. Here's P3. And you can see that the, uh, well, it's very obvious here, the slope between uh, the point P3 and the handle P2 and the derivative at P3 are the same. Okay. The Bezier curve is a parameterized cubic polynomial. There are uh, quadratic and linear Bezier curves, but we're going to just discuss the cubic one, which is very common. Here's a cubic polynomial, and the parameter is t, and t goes between 0 and 1. Now the coordinates, so p0 has coordinates x0, y0, p1 has coordinates x1, y1. I'm going to write out uh, the form for these coordinates. So here's the value of x along the curve, value of y along the curve, and it is in terms of those points. Here's your p0 point, x0, y0. Here's P1. Remember, that's a handle. Whoops, got too much of it. The X1, Y1 is a handle. Here's another handle, the one at X2, the point at X2. And now we're back to P3, which is the endpoint of the curve. Remember, T is going to vary between 0 and 1. And here's a parameterization. It looks a little complex. These terms. 1 minus t cubed and t times 1 minus t squared and t squared 1 minus t and t cubed are called the basis functions, but we're just going to leave them like that and just accept them as they are and use them. There's several homework questions on them. I'm pretty much covering everything that's in the homework right here. All right. Now t is varying from 0 to 1. What happens when t is equal to 0? I'm going to get rid of some of this on the page. It's too messy. So my question is, what happens when t is 0? When t is 0, well, this is gone, this is gone, this is gone, this is gone, etc., etc. And when t is 0, all you end up with is x0, y0. In other words, when t is 0, you're at point 0 on that curve. You remember the maximum value of t was 1. So let's see what happens when t is equal to 1. I'm going to have to erase the curve again, erase the page again. Now when t is 1, I put 1 into this equation, into these two equations right here. And when t is 1, all right, the anything with the form 1 minus t is gone. This is gone. This is gone. And all I'm left with is that final term, the y3, because 1 cubed is 1. For the x's, again, those are gone. I end up with the x3. So when t is 0, the curve is at point p0. When t is 1, the curve is at the end, end point p3. When t lies between 0 and 1, this point, x and y, x of t, y of t, is lying on the Bezier curve. I'm just going to try to draw that. So here's your curve. Here was your point p0 is here and P3 is here. All right. When t equals 0, you're right at this point. When t equals 1, you're at this point. When t is anywhere between, you're, on, you're just tracing out the curve. I'm gonna, and what I said before is that the derivative of the curve equals that straight line slope between the endpoint to the to the handle that's nearest to it. Okay, so I'm going to take the derivative and verify this. So if I want the derivative along the curve, and it's a parametric curve, um, dy by dx is equal to the derivative of y with respect to t divided by the derivative of x with respect to t. So I'm going to go back to that original function. Uh, I won't rewrite it here. You can see it in the notes. And I'm going to take the derivative first for the numerator, dy by dt. When I work through that, it's just the power rule. But I'm going to combine terms like this. I'll have a 3 
And in parentheses, I'll have y1 minus y0. Those are the y coordinates at point 0.1 and point 0.0 times 1 minus t squared. Once you work out the algebra, you'll see it. Plus 3 times y2 minus y1 times the 2t, 1 minus t. And then another term involving y3 minus y2. I can do the same thing for dx by t. It was exactly the same form. And I get this expression, too, for the x's. And now I'm going to make the fraction out of them and um, the ratio out of them and show you the result. OK, so here's the result. And this would be the derivative of any point along the curve as t varies from 0 to 1. But I want to find the slope at the point p0. At that time, at that point, the parameter t is equal to 0. I'll substitute t equals 0 in this equation, and I end up with the derivative of the curve at t equals 0 is equal to 3 times y1 minus y2 over 3 times x1 minus x, um, x I'm sorry, y1 minus y0 divided by 3 times x1 minus x0. In other words, I have y1 minus y0 over x1 minus x0. That is the straight line slope from point 0 to the handle p1. If I look at the last point in the curve at t equal 1 and substitute 1 into this equation right here, I end up with 3 times y3 minus y2 divided by 3 times x3 minus x2. That is the straight line sl slope from the point on the curve p3 to its handle p2. And I just verified what I said earlier, that that straight line slope from the point, the endpoints to the handles is the same as the derivative of the curve. By changing that slope, you change the curve.